conformal mapping. This is going to be a very short lecture. I don't really want to teach a whole lot about conformal mapping here as that's kind of outside the scope of this course. But what I want to do is just hit some key points so you can understand what's of interest about conformal mapping and how it's fixing some problems with transformation optics. So let's have some observations. If in our coordinate transform, we have some really sharp bends, that leads to very extreme properties in the transform. If we need to bend those fields really fast, well, it makes sense we would need extreme values in order to bend the field that quickly. Another observation has to do with the angle of the crossings of the axes after the transform. If your axes are all at 90 degrees with respect to each other, now this could be rotated and tilted, but as long as the crossings are at 90 degrees, we end up with an isotropic material at the end. The less those crossings are at 90 degrees, the more anisotropic our transform becomes. And so the closer we can get to 90 degree crossings, the more isotropic we would like to get. And we would like our design to be isotropic because that is much more easy to realize. So question is, how do we enforce this 90 degree crossing all the time? Well, we use complex numbers as our coordinates. So rather than have X and Y, why not have a complex U and we have a real axis and an imaginary axis? Now we can do math on those complex numbers and just the properties of complex numbers will enforce that our new system, while maybe deformed and contorted, those crossings will still always be at 90 degrees. And that's the concept of conformal mapping. So we use some analytical equation and we'll go from our standard Cartesian coordinates, which is really real and imaginary, and we get to some new coordinate system. And even though this is warped, notice all of the crossings here are at 90 degrees. That means we will get isotropic properties out of this. If at the same time, we can also avoid extreme warpage, then we'd also get less extreme values. So we can fix some of the problems with transformation optics using conformal mapping. And I really wish I could get into more detail, but I wanna leave it here and keep our attention focused on transformation optics. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.